What's up you guys, it's Base Kato and I'm back with another video. So in today's video, we are doing a hot seat questions video, y'all. So I am super excited to do this video. I did go onto the app store and downloaded like one of those like card games. But y'all, they was trying to get me to pay $4.99 a month for this card game. And I was just like, who's paying a subscription to a card game like this? Like, I was not going to pay no subscription to that. So y'all, I literally just did the free trial and screen took a screenshot of all of, like the questions that I thought would be interesting for this video. And I went on ahead and canceled that free trial too right after because... They was not finna get your girl, all right? <laughs> and hopefully you guys can hear me loud and clear because I do have my washing machine going. And y'all, my washing machine is kind of loud. Like, I don't know why it's so loud. But all right, you guys, let's go ahead and get into these questions. And y'all, I'm not gonna lie. Like, some of these questions that were, like, in that game were super spicy. I was like, ooh, let's not get too hot just yet because this is my first hot seat video, y'all. So, you know, we're gonna... We gonna keep it warm for now. I don't wanna expose too much too early. So let's go ahead and get into the first question. So it says, what's an instant turn on for you? An instant turn on for me is a guy that has a really nice smile. Yeah, I like a guy that has a really nice smile, like a really nice smile, teeth, like that's really attractive to me. And also I do like a guy that has like pretty hands and feet. I don't like a guy that's super rough, if that makes sense. But at the same time, I don't like that fake dentures look or uh, veneers. Like, I don't know, like, veneers is a hit or miss on people. Like, some veneers do look good on some people, but other times the veneers just look way too big and, like, corny, in my opinion. So that isn't really like a turn on, but at the same time, I do like somebody that has a nice smile. So if you know, you know. Okay, so the next question says, if the opportunity presented itself, would you want to be a sugar baby? Would I be a sugar baby? Honestly, no, because I've already had opportunities presented to me where people wanted to be, I guess, like my sugar daddy. And it's just like, I don't feel like doing all of that. Like, at the end of the day like if i really needed the money that bad i would just ask like my real parents like my actual family and stuff i don't need to like do all of that to get money to like pay for bills and stuff so no have you ever been cheated on i i don't believe so but no i have not been cheated on what was your first kiss like so i actually remember my first kiss it, i had my first kiss when i was 16 it was weird actually because i had my first kiss with somebody that I didn't really like like that but he was just like one of my guy friends and i remember we had met up at some chinese restaurant to like get food right and i think we were meeting other people there but me and him happened to ride together in my car i think that's how it went and I don't, I feel like we had gotten on the subject of kissing and I said like I never like kissed anybody before and he was like saying well you can kiss me and I, it, it, I don't know I guess I felt kind of like pressured cause not saying that he was like begging but it was just like it was just a situation we were in y'all like I don't know it was weird but we ended up like I ended up kissing him in my car mind you it was literally like just a peck like it wasn't like full on making out or anything like that but it was just like a little peck outside of the damn chinese restaurant like that was my first kiss you guys so the next question is what's your biggest insecurity um i feel like my biggest insecurity is like not being good enough even though i've done so much to be good enough for like whatever opportunity or situation I'm in. That feeling of not feeling good enough for an opportunity. I guess that's kind of like my biggest insecurity. But as far as like, you know, my body or this and the third, I'm not really insecure about like the way I look. I'm pretty, I'm actually very secure now about the way I look compared to like when I was like younger. Cause I'm not gonna lie y'all, when I was younger, I grew up like, in like the suburbs so a lot of my friends were 
white. <laughs> so I remember when I was like really young, I, I remember I wanted to be like a white girl so bad. I did not like my skin, my skin color at all. I hated my hair, this, that, and the third. But I must have like, I guess I just went through things. And like now it's like I accept myself for like who I am. I accept my naturally curly hair, my skin tone. And I feel like I look beautiful now. So as far as like my actual body, me physically, I don't really have like any insecurities when it comes to that. I guess it's just mentally. I have like mental insecurities. So hopefully that answers that question. This one says, what's something you think everyone should experience at least once in their life? Living by yourself. Just being by yourself. I feel like that's something everybody needs to experience. Like at least once in their life. So I feel like once you become independent and you're actually like living on your own, you have your own space, it's like you really do get to learn more about yourself. Like you get to, I get to learn more about me if that makes sense. Like I get to learn what I really actually like, what I don't actually like, and I'm not actually, I'm not influenced by like my parents' decisions or like my family in their likes and dislikes. You're also able to learn how to handle certain situations. Like there's been so many situations now that I've been in where it's like, damn, like usually when I get myself back into that situation, my parents are the ones that bail me out. But it's like now that I'm grown, paying my own bills, this like the third, it's like, I mean, my parents, yeah, they're, they're all, they will always be there for me. But at the same time, it's like I'm grown now. So it's like the only person I can really lean on for certain things is myself. So it's just like a whole learning opportunity. You get to learn your weaknesses, your strengths, what triggers you, what helps you when you get into these maniac episodes this other third. I don't know. It's just you just learn so much about you when you're living by yourself. So I feel like that's something that everybody should experience at least once in their life. Okay, this one says, what's one subject you can talk about for hours? Okay, y'all, I'm not even gonna lie. The one subject I can talk about for hours is the fact that I do not like electric cars. And I feel like our society, the world itself, is just not there yet for electric cars to like be the main car that everybody drives so that makes sense y'all i have so many scenarios of why electric cars are just not ideal cars for right now that it's like crazy but i'm not gonna bore y'all with that subject but i'm just saying <laughs> okay so this is a good question you guys so it says should spending be split 50 50 for couples now i don't know about y'all but i'm just gonna gonna talk about my type of relationship, my ideal relationship that I would be in, and the type of relationship I would be in is that no, we would not be splitting everything 50-50. I would definitely want my man to be a provider. I would want him to take care of things financially, but at the same time, it's like I'll take care of things in other aspects too when it comes to like household chores, the seventh, third. I don't know, it's weird, but I just feel like in a real relationship, like a traditional style relationship, there's never gonna be like 50-50. I feel like there's gonna be points in time where like one partner may be doing more than the other in the seventh, and third, but it's just like life. And life is all about duality in my opinion. So, but as far as doing 50-50, I'm not doing 50-50 personally. Cause I'm thinking if we do, me personally, I'm not going to live with another person and we're splitting the bills. If we have to split bills, I'd rather just live by myself. Because to me, you're just like a glamorized roommate in the eyes of the law, in my opinion. So, no. Um, but I do understand that, you know, people can fall on hard times, especially when being in a relationship. But that's why I say relationships are also all about duality, in my opinion. So, it'll never be 50-50. It's always going to be, you know, it's always going to change. Okay, the next question is, what's your ideal career? Um, it's so crazy, you guys, because growing up, especially like once I was in college and everything, I've already mentioned this in probably um, multiple of my other videos, 
I remember at first I did want to be an engineer, but then I switched from engineering to study economics because I wanted to be a stockbroker. So I already, in, once I graduated college, I did become a stockbroker. So I've been there, did that. Now I'm in banking now. But I feel like those two jobs were like, well, honestly, I can say, honestly, my ideal career at that point was to become a stockbroker. But I will say back then when I was in school, being a content creator, like creating content, this and the third, it was still kind of like a taboo type of career, if that makes sense. Like a lot of people just didn't realize how much money there is in the business of like content creation and like media, this and the third, entertainment. But now that it's 2024, and I've already accomplished those two jobs that were already my ideal jobs at the time, I feel like now my ideal job would be to be a content creator. But it's kind of weird because at the same time, I don't want to get to the point where I'm making content out of desperation because I have to pay my bills. Like, I don't want to ever get to that point of me making content in that type of way. So that's why it's kind of like I still would say my my ideal career is like what I'm in now, which is like finance. And honestly, though, if I did go back to school, I would definitely go back to school to like study. I don't think this is like the actual major in college, but I would study whatever it takes to become a cosmetic surgeon. Because I would love to be the type of person that like injects people's lips or like you know, does like the BBL surgeries, because to me it's like another form of art, except I don't want to be the canvas for that type of art, so <laughs> I'll do it on other people, but I don't want to do it on myself, but yeah, I just feel like it's kind of cool. This next question says, what's the first thing you notice about someone when you first meet? The way they talk. So I know I mentioned in like the previous question that I like people who have really nice teeth, like really nice smile. So of course that's still kind of like the first thing that I notice. But after that, the second thing that I notice is like the way somebody talks or speaks. I know I'm not the only girl that is like this, but it's just like the way a man talks. Like if he can't even talk properly in complete sentences, or they don't know advanced vocabulary type words. It's kind of like, I don't want to be with you. Like, or I just don't see us lasting in like a real relationship because me personally, if I did have kids with somebody, I mean, I'd want my husband to be able to speak in complete sentences. The way some of these people talk this day and age is like crazy. This is a side story y'all, but I was in Target the other day and I had ran into this guy and I knew he was going to ask for my number because I had saw him in one aisle at Target, right? And we had like made eye contact and it was like one of those like making eye contact type scenarios where it's like, I know he was going to approach type ish, but I wasn't trying, but me personally, I wasn't really trying to make eye contact, but he was just in my line of vision. So I was definitely looking at him. But I wasn't looking at him like that, y'all. I'm not gonna lie, he was kind of handsome. So like five minutes later, he did like approach me in Target, like in another aisle. And, but y'all, it's like the way he started talking, he just, I don't know. It's like the way he talked, I was like, mm, I see why you're single. And then he was 32 years old too, y'all. And it's just like, 32 is like a weird age because it's like certain 32 year olds that like have everything like put together, like their life and this other third, finances, everything. Some of them are even married, have kids already. Meanwhile, it's like other 32 year olds that like don't have their life together. They're probably going through like a midlife crisis this, that, and third. And it's like, some of these 32 year olds be acting like they're 22. And it's like, really? Yeah, long story short, I mean, I did give him my number, but then I instantly got annoyed when he called me a week later and he called me drunk, y'all. And I was just like, why would you want our second conversation to be when you're like plastered drunk and like, 
he already wasn't like a good speaker when he was sober. So imagine when he's like high and drunk, like he was slurring his words and the son and third. And I'm just like, this is not attractive. What was your last major accomplished goal? My last major accomplished goal was definitely moving to Houston and getting this apartment. I mentioned it in like all of my videos, but oh, I went through a lot to get this apartment, you guys, but I am so like grateful. I'm so thankful, blessed, this and the third. I'm always like thanking God, the universe for everything that I have. Yeah, and it's just so crazy how I'm like even here right now. And it's so crazy too because after the fact that I moved in this and the third, a lot of like my friends and family members, like they were talking about how like, oh, I inspired them, like I'm an inspiration. And it's like, they make, they, they tell me that I make it look so easy. Like, I remember one of my friends said like, oh, you're the type of person that once you have something on your mind, uh, like a decision, like you, you stand on it and you work towards it. And it's like crazy because me, I be thinking like, y'all don't even understand what I went through behind the scenes to get to the point where I'm at right now. Like people don't see the nights where I was just crying all night. Some days I had like no money in my bank account. Like it'd be like that sometimes, but we up now. We up, we going up now, so. <laughs> this question says, what's the biggest age gap you've had with a sexual partner? Uh, <laughs> this question is a little hot, y'all. This question is hot. Um, the biggest age gap I've had with somebody who was actually twice my age, y'all. Like, 26 years older than me. <sighs> I don't know what I was thinking. Well, I will say, I didn't know he was that much older than me. Because he looked so, I guess he took care of himself. So to me, when I first met him, I thought he was like 30, like 32, not 53 or something. I know he was in his 50s, so I was like shook. I couldn't believe it, y'all, to be honest. I was like, there's no way you're in your 50s. Like, you look so, like, young and, and good. I don't know. So this next question says, how did your last relationship end? Um, <laughs> oh, that's a crazy story. Basically, long story short, y'all, so I graduated college December 2019, and I was about to move into my new apartment, like, the first week of January, so, like, January 2020, and the day I moved into my new apartment, I pretty much ghosted my ex, like, because, I don't know, it was just so much going on in that relationship, y'all, and I... To be honest, I wanted to end that relationship like six, seven months ago, but it was just so much going on. So me personally, the feelings, all of that stuff had left like six, seven months ago, but we were just together just because. And I was like, I don't feel like being with you like that. So yeah, I ghosted him and yeah, but y'all don't come for me because there was so much going on in that relationship. Maybe one day I'll make like a full video on that relationship because it was low-key crazy. But yeah, that's how that relationship ended. This one says, would you rather be rich or famous? I'd rather be rich because there's a lot of broke famous people. So everybody knows that. Ooh, this is an interesting question. So it says, would you uproot and relocate your life for someone you love? Um, I feel like it depends because I've seen it where people relocate their life for like their, you know, for the person that they love and it works out. And I've also seen a lot of times where people have done that ish and it doesn't work out. So I feel like you just have to, um, I don't know. That, that's, that's a hard one, you guys. Honestly, the only way I would relocate my life for somebody else is if I've already accomplished everything that I've wanted to do in life, if that makes sense, that I've wanted to do by myself. Because I can already see myself feeling resentful for moving because of somebody else if I didn't accomplish the things that I've been meaning to accomplish by myself beforehand. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know. It's just, there's certain things that I want to do in life or and there's certain things that I want to or situations that I want to 
feel and explore by myself before I do it with somebody else. So I just hate to look back and think like, damn, I didn't do everything to like its fullest potential at this place before I eventually relocated for somebody else in their need. I don't know if that makes sense, you guys. Y'all, it is kind of late, so I am. My brain is a little bit, like, faded right now. But, yeah. But, all right, you guys. So that's pretty much all the questions that I have for this hot seat video. I will say, you know, we, we're a little bit warm in this video. Not, not too hot, but this is my first hot seat video, y'all. So, we can't go too hot just yet. But stay tuned because the questions are going to get a little bit more spicier the more I do these types of videos. So, yes. And if you have your own hot seat questions for me, then definitely comment them down below. And I'll make sure to answer them in my next hot seat questions video. But anyways, you guys, hopefully you enjoyed watching. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.